Hi guys, David Healy here. So I got a question yesterday. Uh, there was a guy, he's made a guitar library and he wants it so you can play notes uh, with the right hand and then you press keys in the left hand to strum. And you can do like, so you could have two keys so you can do various strumming patterns up, down, stuff like that. And I thought it's a bit hard to explain how to do that kind of thing in an email so I decided I'd make a little video and see if we can do that. Now I haven't done any kind of rehearsal for this so this is all from scratch so there may be a few mistakes in it as we go along but hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Now I'm not going to do a guitar strumming thing because I don't have any guitar samples handy and that's more complicated than is necessary to explain the concept. The basic idea is you need to be able to press a key in your right hand and then press another key in the left hand that repeats the key you're playing in the right hand. So it's a key repeat script. So we'll start off, we'll create an instrument and I'm just going to call this key repeater. And we'll need some samples in here. And I happen to have some handy on the desktop. So these are French horn samples, but they'll do for our purposes. And I'll just stretch this one out a bit so we have a bit more key range. That's going to sound pretty awful, but it shouldn't matter for this. Okay, so let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that sounds pretty awful. Right, the first thing we need to do is we need to establish the key range. And rather than working it out manually. I just, if you ever need to know a particular key range in contact, um, MIDI numbers we're talking about here, this is just a quick way of getting it. Quick little script I sometimes write when I need to know the key range. So this is just going to tell me it. So our key range goes from 36. You can see the message popping out down here as I press the keys. So it's 36 to 60, middle C. So that's important. We need to know the key range. So let's go and write a script. So we've got on note and we'll also need on in it. It's always important. And we'll declare a couple of constants. Call it low note. That was 36, I think. And high note was 60. So that's so we can check the note range. Then we need to have a key that's going to be our repeat key. In the case of my friend's guitar library, he's going to have two of these, but uh, we'll just have one for now. We'll call it rep key. And we'll make this the uh, we'll make this C0, which is key 24, I believe. And let's color that key red so, we can, so it stands out. So we're just going to use set key color rep key, key color red. I'm not going to bother setting up a resource container for now for this. Uh, I'm just going to copy the script in manually because it should only be quick. So I'll we'll paste that in and we're interested in the keyboard. There we go. So there's our rep key. That's the red one on the keyboard there. So what we're going to have, you're going to be able to play a key with the right hand. And then while it's held down, you can play it the uh, the lower C there and it's going to re-trigger whatever key you're playing in the right hand. Uh, right, so we're going to need a variable to remember the last key that was played. So we'll create a variable and we'll call it last key. And when you play a note, so we're in on note, we want to make a record of that last key. So that's just going to be event note. But we only want to do that if the key is within our playable range. That's key 36 to 30. So we'll go if in range event note low key. Oh, it's low note, isn't it? Low note and high note. Now we want to check if our rep key is played. So I'll say if event note 
is rep key. And what we want to do, we want to ignore the event. It doesn't matter too much because we don't have a sample map to this key, but we'll ignore the event anyway so that it won't play any notes just to, in case we did have a sample map to that key for some reason. And usually you do all your group enabling stuff as well. We've just got one group, so I'm not going to bother with that, but you would need to have your disallow allow groups and for your round robins or whatever you're doing with your groups. And then we need to play the note, so we'll go play note. And we want it to be the last key, so we'll put last key. The velocity, we can actually use the velocity that the note is played at, so that whatever velocity they play the rep key, that's the velocity that's uh, passed through to contact. Uh, have an offset of zero for this and uh, the duration of minus one which means if we lift our finger off the key it should silence. Now like I said I'm just writing this kind of off the cuff so I'm going to hit F5 and we'll just see what happens so far. So I'm going to play a key with um, my right hand and then I'm going to press that uh, lower C. We might get some horrible noise or we might get exactly what we want. Don't sound too bad. It's pretty close to what we're after. Uh, now if we play two keys, it's only going to play the last key, so in this case it'll play the F. So it's only going to remember the last key. If you want it to play multiple keys, that's getting into a whole complex realm where you have to make a record of which keys are held down. But since this video is only so far around eight or nine minutes, uh, I'd say let's give it a go, see if we can do it. I'm not promising anything here, but I'm just thinking how would I do it? Uh, well, I'd create an array. That's the first thing I'd do. I'd create an array that's uh, 127 variables. We'll call it, now we can't call it keys down because that's too similar to the other one that's uh, the built-in one called uh, key down. So we'll call it um, held keys. And it's going to have 128 uh, variables, values. I'm going to put in, uh, it's going to have zero in every element by default. So what we've got here now is an array that can keep track of every single key. And we'll actually only be using it for our playable key range, but that's fine. We can probably get rid of our last key variable now because we're not going to use that, we're going to use held keys instead. So what we're going to put in here is held keys and then whatever that key, uh, whatever the played note is, we'll put event note and I'll put equals one. So if you were to play middle C then held keys element 60 would now be set to one. If you'd play C and E then held keys elements 60 and uh, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 64, they'd both be set to 1. So now we, we're keeping track of multiple keys. That's good. We need to be able to reset these values to 0 when you lift your fingers off the keys. So for that we'll use on release. Now oh, why has it done that? I'll rewrite that on release. And we'll do the same thing. We'll check that the key's in the playable range because that's all we're interested in. And we'll just set that to zero. And this seems too easy. So I'm sure we're gonna have some problem in here somewhere. I'm just putting a little reset statement in there to, I always put one at the end of on in it just to clear out any residual messages I've left behind. Right, and now all we need to do is play one note for every key that's held down when our um, re-trigger, our rep key is pressed. So for that we're going to need a loop and we can't have a loop without a counter so we'll have declare i and I'm going to use a for loop here. I'm in Niels's editor so I'm not sticking to all the simple contact stuff. I'm going straight for a for loop. Um, that's not right. What am I writing here? Two number of elements held keys, minus one of course. So what we're doing here is we're just going, we're going to look through every held key 
and any of them that are equal to one, so that's a key that's currently held down and hasn't been released, um, we're going to play a note for. So we'll just put uh, I in there because that'll be the note number. And we're going to say if held keys I equals one, we're going to do that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, so I'm going to hit F5. It compiled okay. That's always a good sign. And we'll paste that in there. So we'll try with one key for starters. Make sure that's working. Okay, so that's not working as I expected. Let's try with two anyway. Uh, we're only getting one repeat and then it's resetting so let me just think why that might be okay so it's resetting after one repeat so there's a bit of debugging to do here i think i know what the problem is but i just want to check it out so we're gonna put a message in on release and we're gonna put event note in here so i can see what notes are being set here i'm gonna hit f5 I'm gonna paste it into there I'll just play one note for now, but we can see the notes that are being released down at the bottom in the message bar. So note 24 is coming through there. And of course that's fine because that's outside of our playable range, so that really shouldn't be having any effect. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I'm just going to do a little test. I'm going to put in here. I want to see, I want to follow the status of one particular key. So look at held keys and we're going to look at key 48, which is the C below middle C. And this is how I usually debug. I have some sort of system for messaging things out and let's try it again. And I want to follow the status. Now, if I hold down that, C below middle C, key 48. I would expect it to always say 1 until I release it, but I have a feeling it's going to be resetting before. There we go, you see, reset there. So that means this lower key is causing key 48 to be reset. And that's because we've got this minus 1 thing in there. So we need to change that to 0. Now this is probably going to cause some hanging notes, so let's see what goes on. So I'm going to paste that in again. So now I can release the key, but we get hanging notes there. Okay, let me explain what's going on here, because it's a little confusing. Uh, but it should be quite easy to fix. When we set this to zero, we're saying let the um, sample run either until the sample finishes or until we actually turn it off and because we're not turning samples off anywhere there's no note off messages the samples are hanging so what we've got to do is keep track of all the notes we've, we've played and only turn off those notes that we're playing when the actual key is released so if I play note 48 using the rep key I don't want it to be turned off until I actually release the real note 48 so that's the challenge now. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another array, like our held keys array, but this one's just going to store the note IDs for every single note. Uh, there are other ways to do this. We could probably combine the held keys and note IDs array, and that's probably what I'd look to do if I was um, rewriting this. But as I said, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. So rather than undoing what we've done already, I'll just carry on this way. So we're going to have note IDs and we're going to have 128 values. That's one for each note. And we're going to use these note IDs every time we play a note. So now we can keep track of which notes are playing. And we can say when we release a key down here, where, where we're resetting held keys, we also want to turn off um, those notes. So we can say note off 
and the note off command just requires a note ID which we'll get from our note what am I doing here our note IDs array that looks good to me so when we release a key and it's in range it'll turn off any notes that are assigned to that note ID it means you'll only ever have one of each note playing at a time uh, which is probably the way you want to go if you're using something like a guitar you can only sound a particular note once you can have the ringing lasting but that's more kind of a reverb or ADSR effect so that shouldn't be affected too much you could change this note off to a fade out if you prefer okay let's paste this in and see if it works we'll start with one note again and we've still got the hanging notes okay there's still an issue with hanging notes there so let me see if I can narrow it down okay I'm sure one or two of you have already spotted my mistake here but basically what we're doing is because at the, in this side inside this if statement event note is always going to be rep key so it's always going to be 30 uh, was it 24 so where I've got note off event note that's wrong it should be note off and whatever the old note was and we're getting that from the value i because we're going through every single note here so that should just be i and we need to do the same thing here where we're playing a new note that should also be i okay that should work now i think fourth time lucky paste that in so i'm going to play a note yeah that seems to be quite good although you'll see the first time we play we've got if you look up if you watch this counter up here, this is the voice counter. So I'm going to play a note. And we have one voice. If I now repeat a note, we have two voices playing both at the same time. If I play a third note, it should stay at two. I got, it goes back to one, sorry, because it turns off the old one when we got to the end. So the problem with that is we're not tracking the first note that's played because we're only interested if the rep key's played. So that's an easy thing to do. So we'll do that now. That just goes in this if in range thing. And it's pretty much what we've already done. We just need to copy this. We don't need to worry about turning off the old notes, I don't think. Uh, we need to ignore the event, so we'll copy this up to the top. I'll cut it up to the top because we're going to ignore all events now because we're handling them all manually. Now we change this to event note. And we change this to event note. So now we're actually handling all note events ourselves, whereas before the first one was always automatic. And uh, we can probably set that to minus one actually, that's not a problem there. Hit F5, paste it in. So that works fine, I'm going to try the repeat thing. So we've got one voice playing. Ah, and now it cuts them all out. Okay, I've taken a few minutes and I've just worked out what's going on here. And um, I'm going to show you because I think other people may find this useful because I've been doing some problem solving of this and I want to save you the hassle. Now, it's going to get a bit complicated. Always does when we're dealing with uh, polyphonic things. Um, I don't think polyphonic variables will help us here. I was just uh, contemplating that, but I think we may need yet another array. So the first thing is, I've decided that turning off the note here is not the way to go. What we need to do is have a thing that turns off the note when the rep key is released. So we'll start with that. So if we release the rep key, what we want to do is turn off all notes so they're held down. So we can just copy all this. And uh, instead of playing the notes, what we want to do here, of course, is turn all the notes off that are held down. So if the key is held, note off, note IDs, and then I. And because we're using I down here in the release callback, and we're using it up here in the on note callback, um, and we're dealing with multiple keys and stuff, it's probably a good idea in this instance to make I polyphonic. So we'll do that. Now, now let's just test out what we've got so far. I think this should almost work. There'll be a new bug introduced, but I'm aware of what that is, and we'll discuss that in a minute. But if I play a key now, and then I'm going to play the rep key. 
So we can see that works as we expect, and I can play a key on its own. And if I play uh, three keys, and if you keep an eye on the voice counter, if I'm playing three keys, there should only ever be three voices. That it'll jump up to six voices briefly while the new ones take over. Now, if I hold down the rep key, it's going to maintain those voices until I release it. So the rep key is what creates the extra voices and turns them off. So that seems to be working as we expect. If you want the voices to always turn off uh, when the rep key is played, then you're going to have to do some more stuff in on note. But I'm happy with that because it's kind of it's meant to be a strummer. Um, kind of thing where, where you just tap that key to get a rhythm. It's not meant to be held down for chord things, but you can do that if you want. Right, so there's one problem I can see here. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to manifest itself, so I'm going to test it now. But basically, if I was to hold down a couple of notes, then press the rep key and hold it down, and while the rep key is held down, play a third note, I'm not sure what will happen when I release the rep key. I think all notes would turn off. So let's give it a go. So I'm going to hold down two notes, press the rep key, and then play a third note. So we've got five voices, which is what I expect. The first two notes were repeated, and then I added a, an extra note. And now I'm going to release the rep key. And it's gone down to two, which were the original two notes. So it's actually turned off that extra note on me, which I didn't want it to do. It should have maintained the three notes. Okay, this isn't too much of an issue. Um, like I said, this button's meant to be used more of a str uh, the rep key is meant to be used more for a sort of tap and strum effect. So I, I can't see it being too much of a problem. Um, I imagine it's quite easy to fix. I'm not gonna do it now because this video is running a little long. This is something for you to build upon, and hopefully you can see how we can use um, arrays of keys to keep track of what's going on. But the rep key idea itself is pretty simple. I've implemented it recently in an instrument, which was, it was actually a legato, uh, an instrument that used legato, so it was all, um... okay, I'm gonna show you an instrument that I've been working on. Okay, so this is the French horn I'm working on. We're doing a whole brass thing. Um, we've just been recording all the samples, so this is kind of a sneak peek of what it's gonna be like. But the reason I'm showing you this is because it's um, it's got a legato feature. So this has got a legato feature, and um, which is monophonic. So the rep key for this um, is this green key down here, this G key, um, is actually was r like kind of the simple version we just did. It was much easier because it's not polyphonic. It was just a single key. <laughs> And it was just so you didn't have to do things like it's so you could um, do easy note repetitions with a legato transition. Um, so yeah, so if you're doing it for a legato or a monotype instrument, it's going to be really easy. For a guitar with, poly um, with polyphonic playing and chords and things, yeah, that's where you're going to get tied up with all these arrays. But we've only been going for half an hour or 40 minutes. Put a couple of hours into this and I'm sure you can get something really good working with um, uh, full polyphony in all kinds of situations. And for a guitar I'd probably have two rep keys so you can do some cool strumming patterns with your um, index and second fingers down at the bottom while playing chords up at the top. And you could combine it with a strum engine and you could have all sorts of other stuff going on. So thanks again, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out um, my other tutorial videos on YouTube and at extantaudio.com where I've got a whole training series there. And leave comments below on YouTube and I'll see you on the VI Control Forum and all that kind of stuff. And uh, thanks again and I'll see you next time.